Hey everybody, welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and this video is going to be a brief and simple introduction to slicing software for printing 3D models, either on FDM printers that use the filament or resin printers. Now, I hope that if you're just starting out and you're a beginner, this video is going to help you understand the very basics that you need in order to start printing things. Now, there's no way around it. You're going to need to use slicing software because when you find a model that you want to print, you have to open it up in that software in order to convert it to a file that your printer is going to be able to understand. And as you get more advanced with it, all the little tweaks and changes to attributes that you make inside of the slicing software will also be included in that file that you give to your printer. But I'm not going to talk about anything complicated, anything advanced at all. Just want to show you the very basics that you need to know just so that you can get a print started. Now, the first thing that we need is a file. There's a lot of different websites that you can get these files, but I'm over here at printables.com and I want to print this Fester Adams bust. Uncle Fester, as he was portrayed by Christopher Lloyd in the Adams Family movie a long time ago. And I'm going to be printing these on my printing this on my Creality Ender 3 Pro. All right. So here's something that you need to know when it comes to 3D files, you can't just grab anything and print it because some things need supports. Some files don't need supports. So in order to make your life a little less complicated, I would recommend just starting out with something that you can just print straight up on the bed and not have to worry about supports. And this bust is one of them. You need to look at the description of the things that you want to print and see if the person who uploaded this says anything like you can print it without supports or unsupported printing or just some kind of variation of those words. That way, you know that when you go and you open it in your slicing software, you can just export it and you don't have to worry about supports at all. So this is just one thing that allows me to print without supports and there's only one file associated with it. Now, most files that you get are going to end with .stl. That's the file that you're going to need to open up inside of your slicing software. Now, hold on. I've said that a few different times. What the heck is slicing software? Well, there's different types of slicing software, but they all pretty much do the same thing. They take these files, these STL files, and then they convert it into a language that your printer can understand. But the one that I am using for this is called Cura. The proper name is Ultimaker Cura, but most people just refer to it as Cura. And it's one of the most popular pieces of software for slicing 3D files for filament based printers. So you can just go to their website and you can download it and you can download it for free. All right. And then once you're done with that and you download the file that you want, preferably something that does not require supports, all you have to do now is open it up inside of the application. So this is what Cura looks like. And once you start this software, it's going to ask you what kind of printer do you have? And you can just select it from a list. And then it's going to give you some recommended print settings. Now, I really haven't changed anything here. So there's no super secret setting that I've manipulated in order to make my prints look good and yours won't look good. I really haven't changed anything. Did some research on the internet and most people say that this infill density here is good between 15 and 20%. So I just keep it at 20%. I also keep it at this standard quality here, 0.2 millimeters. And then the nozzle that I use is a generic PLA nozzle, the one that comes with the Ender 3 Pro, which is 0.4 millimeters. So I don't have to change that either. And I'm using PLA as the printing medium. So I don't have to change that either. So we're all good. Chances are you're going to be good with this too. So now we are going to open up our file. So we're going to go here. We're going to open this up. You can't see the, the window that I see here, but I'm just grabbing the file for the uncle fester bus. And then I'm going to click open and now boom, there it is. Uncle fester. Now we can't see all of it right now. So if you have a mouse with the wheel, you can just scroll back on the wheel in order to zoom out so that you can see more of them, or you can move that mouse wheel up to get even closer to them if you want. 
And you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard in order to rotate this around so that you can see it from every angle, or you can go down to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen and click on these little cubes to instantly go to this side of the model that you wanna see. Now here's a little warning down here. It says model errors. You're gonna see this sometimes. It says the highlighted areas indicate either missing or extraneous surfaces. Fix your model and open it again into Cura. Sometimes that will happen. But for this case, we're trusting that the person who made this file, they say that you can print it supportless. So we are going to trust them. So we're just gonna ignore this warning here. But as we kind of rotate this model around, we can see little spots that are red and that's them telling us, hey, I'm not too sure about this area. You might want to put some supports right here, you know, and sometimes that is true. But in this case, like I said, we're trusting the developer with this. All right. So now we got Uncle Fester here. What we can do is we can click on him and that's going to open up some different options on the left side of the screen. The first one is going to be move so you can move him around the plate which can be useful if you want to print more than one thing at a time. So if you want this to be back here and then you wanted something else to kind of like be in the corner, as long as you can fit it, that's how you move it around. Now, as you saw, if you go outside, the print area is going to be highlighted in this gray and yellow. And that just means, hey, you're outside the print area. You need to make it smaller or you need to move it somewhere else. So we're just going to move it right back to where it was right there in the middle. All right. The second option here is for scaling. Let you make it bigger or you can make it smaller. Over here on the right side, you see that these are percentages and this makes it really easy to know how big your model is going to be. So right now it's printing at 100 percent, but I can just easily go in and say, I want it to be at 50%. And as long as I have uniform scaling checked right here, that means that once I press enter, all three of these attributes are gonna go down to 50%. So bam, we made it half the size and now everything is proportionately 50%. And that's really good. So just in case you don't move one part of the, or make one part of the model bigger, and then the rest are just disproportionate and it looks weird. Just make sure you have this uniform scaling setting checked. But I'm gonna just go right back and reset it to the way it was. I wanna print this at 100% down here is how you rotate and these all the little axes that you can move in order to rotate them so if i wanted to just rotate him just straight up in the middle i can just hold on to this blue circle here and rotate it's a little laggy i don't know why it's laggy but yeah it's really it's kind of laggy right now or you can go to another ring and then you can rotate let's just say this green ring right here kind of like tilting it like this. You kind of get the picture. Here's the red ring. So if I do that, we're kind of just making it go face down or making it go straight back like that. So that's basically how you just rotate and just kind of manipulate it there. And some of these other settings here are something that you don't need to use right off the bat, such as mirror. You don't really need to do anything with this when you're first starting out. Per model settings and all this, you don't need to worry about that. Support blocker, you don't need to know about that. When you're printing a model that is just print in place and doesn't require any supports, don't even worry about these three options here. You know, just come back later once you know a little bit more and then you can make use of those. So once you got everything the way that you want it to be, all right, as far as the size and, and the direction that you want it to face or as many models that you want to put down, then you go down to the bottom right hand corner and you see slice. I think my face is blocking it, but there is a blue button down here that says slice. So you go ahead and you click that and it's starting to slice. There is a uh, there is a progress bar that's currently moving. All right. So I took my face off for a second and then you can see it tells you an estimated time of when this is going to be done one day in 46 minutes based on these settings that I have assigned and it's going to use approximately 273 grams of filament. All right. So that just lets you know how much you're uh, actually using. So if you're cool with that, then 
you can save it. I already have my disk inside of here, so I can just say save to removable disk. And it's saving it to the drive that's already in my computer. And if you don't have a drive in there, you just save it to your hard drive, get a USB stick, put it on that, and then move it over to the printer. Now for resin files is similar. There are different slicers that you can use for resin 3D printing. The first one that I used came from Anycubic, it was the Anycubic Photon Workshop. But then I started trying something different and I found something that I liked better quite quickly. This is called Lychee Slicer. Again, the base version is free. They have like a pro version that you can pay for if you want, but you don't have to, but this is going to get you started. So here it is when you first open it up and just like any other program, you can add a file to it. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna add a file. So loading up right now is a Batman bust that I printed not too long ago from Batman Returns. So as you can see, with this bust, there are supports at the bottom because the creator of this file knew that this needed supports and they included it with the file. So just like when you're trying to print with filament, if you don't want to deal with supports, then look to see if they specifically said that it doesn't need supports. But if it does need supports, also see if they say that they've included those supports. And if you're not sure, you can download the file, open it up in this software, and you see that these are supports. You see that? It's really like quite literally, it's holding it up. And it's also making it so that when it gets to a certain point in the print job, the things that it needs to print won't technically be floating in midair, which would not be possible for it to print. So supports are another thing that I personally think is more advanced. I haven't tried to do my own supports as of yet, but just know starting out, you don't need to know how to do this immediately. So here's how this software works. Let's say that, hey, this Batman looks pretty awesome, right? You can hold the right mouse and you can rotate this around all the way around. See how smooth it is. You can scroll up with your mouse wheel to get closer, scroll back with your mouse wheel to get further away. And just like Cura, we have options on the left side in order to make changes to it. And it's, all, it's very, very similar to Cura actually. These may all be based on the same uh, type of software, I'm not sure, but um, either way, it makes it easier for you to know what to do. So some of the options here, you have rotate. We've already been rotating uh, this guy around here. Uh, so we can choose to rotate the model. Here are those color lines that we saw before. You see it's much smoother in lychee. So we can just move him around like that. If we wanted to tilt him a little bit, we can do like that. Woo, get kind of crazy with it. Um, we can also tilt it this way if we wanted to. No way in heck it will ever print that way, but you can do that if you want. And if you want to reset it, just click reset and it's right back to the way that it was and the way that it should be. With scale, again, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. You can go to this box right here in the middle and just scroll with that, making it bigger and smaller. And you'll be able to see when you are outside of the printing boundary. All right. And then over here on the right side, you can also see that percentage scale right there. So if you want it to be 100% and you make sure that uniform scaling is on, just say 100% and everything is 100% to scale in proportion. Or you can do fit to bed, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Fit to bed just basically means make it as big as my bed can hold. But as you can see, if we do that, then we are cutting off part of the print right there. All right, now we can try to rotate it to kind of see if that'll help us out a little bit. And as you can see, not really able to do that. It's still just a little bit too big. With a little bit of fiddling, we can get him back to where he was. So he is pretty much as big as he can get on this particular plate here. All right, so um, another thing that's really, really awesome about this software that can really help you out here is that you can also choose what printer you have it's going to save those settings for you you have to set up an account but it's okay so you can pick the printer that you have and this is my printer the photon mono 4k and then you can also choose the resin that you have and then you can assign different attributes to that resin so you see the one that i'm using is the soraya tech easy gray okay and i can go to edit 
and then I can just change different attributes of this resin. And it kind of just depends on how you like it. And this is the exact same Batman that I printed using those settings. So if you want to copy those settings, go right ahead. But they might work for you. They might not work for you when it comes to this particular type of resin. It's something you kind of have to experiment with. But if you are going to copy these settings, just know that over here, it's mm slash s and normally it's mm slash m but for these two settings here i changed it because my mind just kind of worked better with this measurement as opposed to mm slash m so that's just something that i do all right so that's the setting that i have for that um, but the also really awesome thing that you can do is you can import different settings that you might find online. And if you want to add a different resin, you can go up here and you can choose your printer. You can choose your model. You can choose your resin brand. So let's just say I was using Elegoo resin and let's say that this was I was using this rapid standard one in gray and then the community has settings that they've used that they found to be successful and you can basically just choose one of these and just import it and you can use those settings if you want to see how those work out for you. So I really do like that this is included and it makes it really easy for you to interact with. And then if you don't want to use the community stuff, you can just keep putting in manually your own resin settings. So when it comes to slicing, exporting this figure, you'll be able to do that. So we're at the layout tab. We can go over to prepare. If you're going to do supports, you don't need to do supports for this one, but if you wanted to, this is where the supports would be and you would do all these other little tweaks and settings. But if you just want to export it, you go to export right here and then you make sure that you have your resin selected right here. All right. And then it gives you an estimated print time, two hours and four minutes. It's not going to be exact. It might be a little bit. Well, it's often longer than this, but it just kind of gives you an idea. And then you can hit export slices to file. Now, because this is the free version, every time you go to slice something and export it, you are treated to a 20 second ad, which sometimes I don't mind because it lets me see some really cool miniatures and, and, and projects that I might want to support. So I don't really mind it when uh, when these ads come up. And then there's other features that's locked behind the paywall as well that you don't need when you're just starting out. Then you can click continue at the bottom and then your window will come up telling you, hey, where do you wanna save it? You can't see it right now, but I'll go ahead and I'll say save. And then this is the screen that you're gonna see as it's rendering. And once it gets all the way up to 1958 layers, it will be complete. And then you can export it to your SD card and then take it down to your printer, put it in your printer, go to the settings and start printing. And just like Cura, if you were to click down at the bottom left where it says the estimated amount of resin that you're going to use, you'll see that this model is going to take approximately 52.58 milliliters of resin. So you can kind of keep track of how much you're using because you can go through resin really, really fast. But those are the basics when it comes to slicing software. Two of the slicing softwares that I use, Lychee Slicer and uh, Cura, uh, they allow you to get much deeper, a whole lot deeper than what I did. But if you just are getting started, you know, like I said, and you just want to start printing, and you don't want to deal with anything where you have to create manual supports and maybe you just want to do stuff that you can straight up print on the bed or you'll print something that already has supports included. This is how you do it without having to make any other tweaks and adjustments to your model besides maybe moving it around the plate or making it bigger or making it smaller. So I hope this was able to help you out and maybe even get rid of some of the apprehension you may have had when you heard the term slicing software for the first time. It sounded pretty intimidating, but as you can see, if you're just trying to print off something really basic like, it's really easy to do. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Jeremy and I'll talk to you later.